everybody and welcome to this stream the second one and yes. greetings to Glenn. Uh, I am Felgar and I'm just again blessed and honored to be joined uh, by the very lovely Gary G from two channels uh, Gary G reviews and uh, Gary G gaming okay yep. she's a big time gamer you know just like well who isn't unless you're not a gamer and then um, she does fantastic outstanding reviews I think uh, really fun, awesome. Uh, I don't want to call them LPs, but little clips from from uh, video games. You know, various different things like any anywhere from like Dragon Age uh, to like what, what was that the war one that we were playing? Was that Call of Duty or uh, the one where you're doing the headshots? Oh no, no, Sniper Elite Three. Sniper Elite Three. That's the one. You know, things like that. So it's not just one set of genre. She loves like games uh, in, in all. You know all kinds of games all kinds of genre which is just absolutely fantastic i think she's highly underrated and i really think that more and more folks need to become aware of both of her channels so please if you are watching this or you're watching this like right now on the live stream or if you're you know going to watch this uh on uh youtube which you can find this video both on her channel as well as mine uh and i'll be providing links down below click on her links give her a sub show her much love and support i've got um i don't know if this is Clash of Clans. Mm. I don't know oh, if you yeah. that game. It's a, it's a phone game. I'm just uh, collecting my gold very quickly. It's one of those things where it's like a real time thing. And hold on here. And just collecting. And that's it. Okay. Yeah, I think I've heard of it, but you know, since it, since you've mentioned uh, that I like games of all genres. Yeah. Uh, there's actually some games that I don't play and really? that are pretty much those yeah those games that um, are kind of like strategies and those games that are the viewing is from above you can say uh, when uh, when you see the characters from above and there are some minor characters uh, down there that are surrounded by a circle that yeah. are the ones that I really don't I, I know the one, I know what you're talking about, kind of like that Clash of Clans or like Diablo, where it's like a... Top yeah, map. yeah, exactly like Diablo, yeah. Exactly like Diablo, so I take it, you don't play Diablo? Nope. Hmm. No. Well, that's, that's fine, that's cool. Well, I mean, um, hey, at least Fallout 4 is not like that. <laughs> yeah, Fallout 4 is just like Skyrim, you know, first person yeah yeah of course uh, fallout it's one thing that uh, is one of those games that i would uh, play if i like the mechanics like we discussed last time so uh, last time when i uh, when when i finally get the game and get into the game we'll see but uh, i mean uh, just talking about genres and stuff uh, so, yeah just no strategies no games like diablo basically Gotcha. So I take it Fallout Tactics probably won't be your thing because I, I've never played it, but I think Fallout Tactics is, I think that's like the third game in the series. Uh, not technically not Fallout 3, but it's like a spin off of the Fallout uh, series. I think after Fallout 2. I think that is like a strategy uh, game. What is it about the strategy games that does not appeal to you? Well, I'm going to tell you right away. Uh, it's the perspective from which you're playing. I like to be in the action. I like to be um, either in third person or first person. I much prefer to be in third person so I can see the character from head to toe and just to feel everything. I mean, in first person, you've kind of, it's, yeah, it's closer. But you can't really feel the character, at least for me, uh, when you play in third person because you know how the character looks like. You see him every minute, and you see how he hits, he he shoots, uh, whatever is that that he does or she does. So I like to be uh, that character. And when you play strategies, you just make some troops for say go there, do this. I just don't feel a part of the action that much. I see. Yeah, you're kind of like me about uh, like immersion. You like you like being immersed into the the role of the character or in the world, and yeah. I absolutely love that. And that's what I love about the Elder Scrolls game, um, you know. And then of course the Fallout games. I you know I even go so far as to say you know like uh, Dragon Age and uh, the Mass Effect series, you know, but put out by Bioware. Um, those have like a very strong immersion and very solid storytelling. 
you know, I got to report. I mean, there's always excellent voice acting, uh, and the storytelling is is immaculate. I think in those series. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you get to play uh, uh, in first person and in third person in Skyrim. So let's not forget that that is a huge plus to Skyrim, which I think that more games should use because it's just genius. If you used to play in the third person, you can. If you used to play in the first person, you can. It's there. You have to choose it. Uh, it's just amazing. And about Mass Effect 3, I only played actually uh, the last game. I mean, 3. I, I like how they um, uh, created this option, whether or not you want to play this as an action game or as an RPG. And I chose to play it as an action game because this is kind of more of my thing. Uh, and so those kinds of uh, those kinds of options are just amazing, and I think more games should have them because uh, it, it, it's just amazing uh, thing uh, that you can choose from, and it's a must-have uh, in today's games. Uh, yeah, Absolutely. No, no doubt about that. I think. Well, with the Mass Effects, I do recommend going back to the first, um, but if if not that, the second and third, because when you play the second, you actually transfer your character from the second one to the third, and the story kind of continues off. So, like, whatever choices you made in the second one, consequences that might have happened, people you might have killed, and choices, and the third one, it has an impact in the third game and can change the world a little bit. So, That's interesting. Yeah. That's very interesting, but I really don't have time to go back no. to old yeah. games since I have so many yeah, new yeah. games, you know, but it, it's pretty good idea overall, yeah. And I have to say that uh, I continued with The Witcher, oh, and I'm awesome. super happy. I finally figured it out. I mean, it's probably super funny to most people that I uh, that I was stuck. I didn't know how to continue the, the quests and how to find Siri, but uh, since they're not accustomed to RPGs, how most people are, I think it's right. pretty pretty normal. And The Witcher is not uh, like the other RPGs. I mean, it has its own system. So uh, in order to complete uh, the main quests, you have to first do uh, other that are kind of like side quests, but they're mm -hmm super linked to the main quest so they are main quests but if you want to go like the list is made on the menu you can because uh, the game demands to track a particular quest that could be a little bit down below uh, you know you know what I mean I mean the list and here is one quest one quest but the quest that you must do is like some somewhere here yeah. and so if you can track the quest if you hit a V or space or whatever that button was if you yeah. can track it so you can play it and from then you you just uh, see the story unravel and you can play the previous quest that you think that uh, that you thought of that you you should play before but it turns out that it's not this is not the case and you have to play them after that and, and so so it's a little bit complicated at least how I see it, but I finally figured it out, everything, so I'm going to the story, and these days I try to play at least two hours of The Witcher because, you know, it's a super long game, so I'm doing everything possible to, to finish it. If I do, it's going to be awesome, and it's also going to be uh, my third RPG that I fully finished, wow. I mean, the main missions. Uh, Sorry, I said something in Bulgarian. No matter. <laughs> Sorry, it's no problem. I, let me try to guess what the other two were. Were they Skyrim and Dragon Age Inquisition? Uh, uh, no, actually, the first one was Kingdom of, <laughs> Kingdoms of Amalur, Amal Skyrim, oh, wow. and uh, yeah, and those are the two. And I almost, I think, I almost finished Dragon Age, but I'm, I'm not sure. I have to continue it also. Right, and there's two expansions for it right now as well. Um, no, I don't want to play the extensions. It's just oh. kind of a waste of time oh. once again when you have uh, so so many games and you have to play the expansions and it just is it, wow. too much. I mean, the game is already too big for me. Oh my uh, god! Okay. With my time, I mean, I have so less time to play games, unfortunately now. Oh, that is that's kind of sad for me to hear that. Oh. Because I know that, of course, you know, you're a big time gamer, and for a gamer to just not have a lot of time, it's not good. <laughs> yeah, oh. I know, but 
unfortunately when i am I, i'm at work all day i have to go home you know um yeah. you have to keep everything clean you have to have something to eat i have to work out and i work out at home now oh okay okay yeah because i have all i needed here and so the time for gaming is like mm, one or two hours a day and i most of the time i don't even have those yeah, I don't have like before when I uh, I went home from school and and I didn't have anything much to do, so I like game like five hours a day. Yeah, that's that's our truth. That is the life. <laughs> that is the ideal thing. Yeah, I, I've well, well, you know, uh, you know, get, getting back to The Witcher Three, um, how many hours would you say you've put into that game so far in Witcher Three? Well, I have no idea. I haven't checked really. Oh. But I'm pretty into the story, so I'm hoping that I'm going to find Siri soon because every time that I think that I'm getting close, mm. uh, something else pops up and they say, oh, no, you have to do this now. Otherwise, I'm not going to tell anything about Siri. And I'm oh. like, oh, come on, I just finished this quest and it was so long and yeah. <laughs> It seems like but, there's time sensitive kind of quests in there. I've never played the first Witcher. I started playing the second Witcher on my 360. Matter of fact, I have, what is it called? The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings Enhanced Edition is what I have. So it's completely uncut from the PC version. So it has, you know, it's completely like the R rated, if I may be so bold. You know, it's got all the nudity and stuff like that in the game uh, and the violence. And, um, Gaming for five hours a day has been great for those people. Okay. Uh, it's just, uh, that, cause we got some people watching the stream here, and uh, my good buddy Todd's watching. And uh, he's just, you know, because he's a big time gamer, so he's commentating on, you know, you know, on yeah, this yeah. The amount of hours gaming. It's hilarious. <laughs> totally awesome, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. So Todd, I know you're watching this. If you want to get in on this and join us, please, because I know you're a big time gamer as well. We need we need more gamers to to get involved in this. That's why I tried inviting also Gix and like Nagadal. These are some of the more super popular uh, YouTubers out there, you know, gaming YouTubers out there. Uh, but Spy the Movie Guy as well. I mean, I consider everyone pretty much. I, I think I consider every other YouTuber out there pretty much popular, other than me, because I'm just uh, uh, yeah. I, I look up to all you guys. You know what I mean. Um, but what was I saying? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, as I was saying, with Fallout 2, um, I, I played a little bit. I got to, like, the first time. Did you ever play Fallout 2? Nope. Uh, this game is from what year, exactly? Uh, I think Witcher 2 came out in, like, 2012? I think 2012 or 2013, something like that. Yeah, something like that, as I remember. I tried to play it, but uh, once again, I was so not into RPGs back then, so I just left it, basically. Uh, oh, okay, you just left. Yeah, I, I'm going to be honest with you, because I'm so used to, like, Skyrim, and so when I played uh, Witcher 2, it was so different having to play this this character, Garrett, or Jared, or I can't remember, Geralt, or whatever. Geralt, 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 yes, Geralt. Okay, yeah, yeah, and... It's kind of cool, you know, the, the fighting and everything. It's, you know, you don't have a choice to be in first person. Mm -hmm. But it's something about you have to switch from silver weapon to, like, a steel weapon. And so only certain kind of metals can affect, you know, different different character, you know, different enemies. Um, you have to switch up, you know, setting up traps, I think, and spells. You, you got to keep, you know, changing it up. Um, I really should go back and give it a chance and give it a try. But... I don't know, for me, I always prefer, and I'd like to hear your take on this, what do you think of RPG games that uh, have you create a character like Skyrim, like Dragon Age, and like, you know, with the upcoming Fallout 4, or games that kind of give you a character that you have to play, like you have to play Lara Croft when you play a Tomb Raider game, or you have to play Geralt when you uh, play Witcher 3. Do you prefer creating your own character, or do you prefer playing a character that is already created for you? Yeah, well, I personally prefer to play a character that is already created because, yeah, it's just how I'm used to from the action games. Not that I have anything against playing with a character that I'm creating, but it's much cooler to, yeah, well, I'm not really sure that it's much cooler, but 
it's just a matter actually of um, preference, you can say, because when you play Geralt or or uh, Lara Claw, uh, Lara, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very hard for me. Lara Croft, yeah. Yeah, Lara Croft. Uh, it's cool because you know who she is, you want to uh, feel what it's like to be her. Uh, this is already a set of character, it's already an, an established character. So you're feeling kind of like super cool to be in her shoes, to have her adventures, to see how she sees the world and through her eyes and all that stuff. So I prefer that, you can say, because just uh, this is just the way that I'm used to, but I don't have it, anything against to play a character that you created because uh, you can choose how this character to look like, which is also super, super great. So because, both things I like. Right, and it's like you're creating your creation, um, like you could create a character that is you, like and call her Gary, you know, and kind of resemble you. Um, like I'm thinking for Fallout 4, I would create a character that kind of looks like me, I mean, fix myself up and make myself look better, I guess, and you know, things I wish. <laughs> okay, but um, so so yeah, uh, and not only that, but you when you create like your own character, even yourself, to a representation of yourself in a game, um, you kind of carve your own path. You create your own story. You know what I mean? You're like I, it's you know like in the, you talked about like uh, you know two you know Lara Croft being an established character, but here you kind of create your own. You carve your own path and create your own story and become like an established character so say when you get to a certain point in the game you kind of have a renown and you're kind of known for you know uh you know slaying this kind of creature and saving you know whatever like maybe Arafu from the from the the, the blood tide gang i forgot what the the, the name of the, the gang is but there are these vampire characters uh so you're kind of renowned for that and then the world you know the, the word travels to everyone and they kind of know you for kind of like your deeds you know and they know you as say gary and so you kind of created your own kind of um, like your, your own kind of history, your own kind of path, your own kind of story. How do you feel about that? That's kind of cool, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's super cool. Uh, well, if you think about it, because now that I'm listening to you, I'm thinking about this. Okay. When I play, for example, like The Witcher now, I'm feeling like The Witcher. So okay. you kind of become this character and you're just you're feeling just like him and when you play yourself you can say um it's also pretty cool but in a way now that i'm thinking about it because i'm thinking i'm thinking about um kingdom of amalur ah. you, you always can say anything you listen to other npcs how they talking to you well not every time but you can say that you're just kind of a listener in those games mm -hmm. and and you go through the story, you do everything uh, as your character, you upgrade yourself. But yeah, I, I, I just don't feel the appeal that I have to create somebody because um, most of the times I just creating men and I, I play as men. Well, you play as men, okay. Yeah, because I love to create a big muscle guys. <laughs> I got you, oh, of course, well, yeah, I, I, I know from your... I remember from your Avengers, uh, uh, <laughs> your Avengers review, you had a problem. <laughs> I got to bring this up again. It's cracking me up so much. Uh, Mike Ruffalo, <laughs> and you said how he came out of the show, <laughs> and he had the hair all over his, <laughs> all over his body, and you didn't like that. And that's yeah. like, uh, and then that was like your number. One, that was the number one complaint you had uh, yeah. with, <laughs> with the film. Was Mike Ruffalo <laughs> and his hairy body, and you don't <laughs> you don't like that. And I, think, I, I can't remember if you mentioned that uh, he should go through a process of to get the hair removed because you can do that now, or can you? I'm not sure if it's permanent. No, uh, there's a thing that you can do. You know, they, you know to get the hair out. But um, yeah, I'm not sure it's <laughs> permanent, unfortunately. Oh, it's not permanent. Okay, that yeah, I, I think it's not. Oh, okay, okay. It was too bad for him. But still, maybe he could have gone through that process to do it. I, it didn't bother me because that's like a normal thing, I guess. You know how you know. I guess um, there's just certain certain people that that have that. Um, but but so I take it when you create your character, uh, I take it you make sure you remove all the hair from the body. <laughs> Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. definitely, and uh, make him as muscular and, and bigger as possible. Well, not as possible because in some games you can create uh, uh, mm -hmm. such huge characters that they look 
unnatural and they are mm. like in Saint Rope. Yeah, I don't like that kind of a huge muscly guy, but maybe it, like in John Cena's shape is perfectly fine. Not Cena, eh? Okay. Now let me ask you this. What about Arnold Schwarzenegger from Conan and the Barbarian? Works works as well as well as well as me. Uh, Conan is awesome. I mean Arnold is awesome. He has one of the best bodies. I mean he had one of the best bodies ever, so absolutely. Uh, maybe not so much now, yeah. <laughs> Okay. No, not so much now, but it's not like he can't work work out pretty hard and yeah. recreate his body because he kind of did it in Terminator 3, so he, he looked pretty awesome there and he wasn't that young already. Terminator 3 or you mean Terminator Genesis? Nope, 3, because he was naked there and he was him. 3? Yeah, he with oh. the female Terminator, you know. The female. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I was thinking Salvation, yeah, he's not in Salvation, yeah. I thought three was salvage. Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that that's cool. And I, I I've never seen Genesis yet, so who knows? But I know he's going to be doing Conan again, King Conan or a Legend of Conan. What do you think of that? Yeah, I heard about that, but um, at the moment, no movie news were, were released about this movie. I'm kind of getting worried that it's never going to happen. But I personally mm -hmm. will love if this movie happens because. Uh, this is one of those iconic Arnold roles that he just has to play it. He is that guy. He is Conan. So I'm hoping that the movie is going to be for real pretty soon. But no news for now, unfortunately. I hope so. I hope that they do go through it. I mean, I have it. Well, it's down over there. I won't get it. But I have Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer. And to complete that trilogy, uh, too bad there's no more Valeria, of course, because she was killed in the first one. Um, but still, maybe he can find either like a new girl or something like that. Um, and they're not going to try to play it off like he's still young or anything. He's going to be age appropriate, whatever age he is. And I think he has a son now. So, because he was talking about it a little bit, but I guess, you know, like you said, they kind of put it on hold. Oh, and um, one other thing I wanted to bring. Oh, I guess I wanted to bring up too is when you create your character too. There's two different things, I guess, uh, is, hey, you know, when you create your character, you can actually create Xena. So that's kind of cool. That's 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 like awesome. And then two is, did you see the Deadpool trailer, or the Red Band trailer of Deadpool, the rated R trailer with the swearing and the nudity in there? Did you see that one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but first of all, about Skyrim, uh, yeah. there's actually a mod that you can create Xena for real. Wow. There's some mods developed for that. I I'm not sure if they actually release them but there uh, there are some people that uh was were really working very 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 hard uh, on this so some people even made some videos about it i have to check but it was kind of like um two years before two years so i'm not sure where this ended exactly yeah. and yeah and which is pretty cool of course and about deadpool trailer i filmed a video about this so I'm going to release it tomorrow because probably it, it won't be any time to edit it now. But yeah, I saw both the Red Band trailer and the Green Band trailer, and they were awesome, pretty much awesome. Oh, that is fantastic. I am just so super stoked for that one. And, um, but you do know that Deadpool is part of the Marvel Universe, of course, right? Of course, of course I know. Okay, okay that's cool. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, and I just want to see Deadpool get mixed in. Oh, you saw Colossus in that trailer too. So there we go. So the folks that oh, maybe yeah, Colossus. He's awesome. He's so big and shiny and strong. Yeah. So, <laughs> and of course, we we know that you like the big, the big. But of course, um, we don't see the skin. Of course, it's all silver. But that's okay because you know his silver. He can um, retract it, and then you can see all that. <laughs> um, but what was I saying? Uh, Oh yeah, yeah, and I think the scene was he hit he hit Deadpool, and then Deadpool went flying, and then he hit the the car, and uh, that's very cool. And I did notice that they did not showcase his uh, teleport because Deadpool does have the ability to teleport, but it's not really ability; it's like a device. It's like on his belt, or he's wearing something that allows him to teleport. I don't know if they'll change it in a movie and give it like a mutant power, but um, I but technically it's supposed to be like a device he wears, and maybe they're keeping it as a secret so the guy can teleport. He has healing factor like Wolverine, and he's insane. So, to me, what what a perfect perfect superhero. Um, he's like 
the best parts of Wolverine and Punisher at the same time in a way. Yeah, he's like yeah. the good crazy, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, the good crazy. <laughs> yeah, he's so funny. Absolutely. And and the only thing that um, I, of course, there's just this one thing that I don't particularly like is that Ryan Reynolds just wake up one day and said, let's film Deadpool. And he is in that same exact shape that he's always is. I mean, he's a great shape, but I just wish that he was a little bit bigger because that is how I'm used to seeing Deadpool in the video games and in some, you know, cartoons, in the comics. He's bigger, muscular guy, and you have to uh, at least be a little bit bigger so when you wear that costume, you can tell uh, that you're a muscular guy. And when he wears that costume, he looks like a very fit teenager but it's pretty fit and lean for Deadpool, at least that's how I see it. But when you say big for Deadpool, you don't mean like Schwarzenegger big, like wide, because I don't think, I don't think Wade, uh, you know, Deadpool's character is meant to be like, you know, like Schwarzenegger where he's really, you know, wide on the, you know, the chest and back area, like very broad, like I think, but muscular, but I, I, I gotta look at it again. Um, you just, you mean just like a little bit more muscular than what he is, but not, not too much, right? Well, to be honest, I, I will not say no if he is like uh, in John Cena's or Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, form. Sure. But if he was just a little bit more muscular, so you can see uh, his forms, I mean, his muscles under the suit somehow, it will be cooler. Yeah. The same thing with Spider Man. Spider Man is always too thin for me, for my taste. Really? Well, Spider-Man has always been like a nerdy kind of character and kind of in, I mean, he got some muscles, of course, when he got, you know, the, the spider blood into him, but nothing ever like very big like that. And that's the thing, because it's like an, like an ability and a power, not really based off of the characters, um, like his build. Um, let me see, how can I explain this? Yeah, uh, I know, I know, you, but, uh, you know, uh, from that 90s cartoon that was popular before, at least it was popular. Uh, here, uh, he was drawn um, a lot more muscular, and, and and because that is how I, I was used to watching him uh, when I was a kid, and that is how I imagined him from that moment on. So that is what my um, taste, you can say, is based on, on that cartoon. I gotcha, yeah. Okay. Um, and let me see here. Uh, now, what do you think of Chris Evans as Captain America? Uh, he's he perfect. He's perfect. Oh, wow. Not, nothing bad to say about him. He he has uh, the exactly that that body that um, is uh, more muscular and the same time is not that big. So he's he's great. He's awesome. Awesome, awesome man. That's, I'm very glad to hear that because Captain America is my number one favorite superhero of all time ever since I was a kid. Um, and yeah, great choice for Chris Evans. Um, he looks the part, he plays the part, he worked out even more because if you remember uh, in Fantastic Four, Fantastic. He, he had a great body, but uh, he wasn't that big. And for Captain America, he really put the effort to look wider and uh, more yeah. just, yeah. It, it, this yeah, is necessary. I think for a superhero, this is definitely necessary. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I, I remember seeing him as as um, uh, as Johnny Storm, you know, aka Human Torch. And uh, yeah, he, like you said, he's muscular, but then just still not not as wide. And when you look at him in Captain America, not only was his his physical appearance bigger, uh, but his personality was different. You know, so this this guy has some very uh, you know high quality acting chops. I gotta I gotta say because from being someone like how he is, you know, kind of like cocky and arrogant. You know, and kind of like a like a daredevil type, um, you know, doing stunts and all that, the extreme sports, and then to being someone as very much like a soldier, uh, and very polite to women in Captain America is very very different. So you won't believe that it's the same man, you know, playing those parts. Yeah, he's a gentleman in Captain America. Absolutely. He's great. And by the way, since uh, yeah. we've mentioned those uh, previous Fantastic Four movies, did you like any of those two? Because I just now uh, I saw several reviews of the new Fantastic Four movie and everyone are saying that this movie is a 
total crap. I have no idea. The movie comes out tomorrow, but Ooh. I probably won't be able to see it tomorrow. So maybe I'm going to see it on Tuesday. Uh, but for now, everyone says that the new movie is just even worse than the previous two. And the previous two movies, uh, when I first saw them, um, I, like I, I personally very much like them. I don't have any problems with them, basically, because yeah. maybe it's, it's the times, uh, because this was a long time ago, and I pretty much liked every movie back then, because I was a lot, a lot younger and so on. But... I don't know because um, I grew up also with those uh, Fantastic Four cartoons that were um, basically from the same time that I watched the Spider-Man cartoons and there were Iron Man cartoons that were super popular here and I, and I remember those episodes with Galactus and watching those two movies everyone was, everything was perfect for me because the only um, Fantastic Four that I knew was from those cartoons. Here's one that you might be familiar with. This was in, I think, I think this was in the 90s. Was it 2000? No, 2006, I believe. Okay, these were like in the 2000s. Oh, those are the new ones. Those these are the are new good. ones. I haven't watched those. Oh, these these are good ones. Yeah. Um, I do highly recommend these. Um, you know, hell, I don't know if... Uh, if I still see another, I mean, these these are fairly inexpensive. They're like about ten dollars for that thing. Sometimes I can get it last, maybe seven ninety nine. Um, I don't know if you're able to play American DVDs and Blu-rays in your player. Do you have a region free DVD mm -hmm. Blu-ray player? Because you know, I, I would like to, uh, you know, once it come into a little bit more money and stuff like that, I would like to gift uh, one of those to you if you're able to play it. Are you able what? to play? It? Well, I think that is depending more of the DVDs themselves if, if they're uh, region locked or not. Oh, okay. I think they are region locked. Usually the DVDs are. Um, yeah. If there are, I won't be able to play them uh, unless my PS3 does something. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, if you can look something up, you know, and get back to me and I'll try to look things up, I think you might at least, at the very least, be able to play it on your computer. Yeah, because those you know those are good ones, and that's the complete series of the you know the Fantastic Four, world's greatest. What's it say? World's greatest heroes. I don't know why I couldn't figure that out, but yeah, world's greatest heroes. Yeah, it's it's very good. Well, uh, I could I I'm sure that I will find them on the internet, so yeah. it's not. No worries, basically. I'm sure that they're somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know that you're not a big time collector because, well, you would be a collector probably if you had the room, but I guess you said you don't have enough room. I'm kind yeah. of reorganizing some things to my brother and I, so I might be getting some room. Um, you can't see it, but like back here, there's, I'll be able to, you know, fit more Blu-rays and DVDs. I got a bunch of Blu-rays, DVDs, and um, some video games on here just on the floor. So, you know, I got to reorganize that. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. No. Oh, yeah, come on. What are you going to say? Nothing, just maybe you can buy some new shells and be and uh, put them on the walls. It, it's going to be very cool. And it's and um, because I have those floating shells that are only on the wall, they're not uh, they're not going to the floor. So you have all that space between the shelves and the floor. And yeah, it's it, you, you get you can save some space. I mean, with yeah. those kind of shells. Yeah, yeah, I, I gotta look into that. But I think I'm gonna use the top bunk of my bunk bed, actually, because uh, I'm just gonna take the mattress off and uh, take this up real thing on there. And I have a wood, a plywood thing that goes, you know, where the mattress is on. And that's where I'm gonna put my Blu-rays. <laughs> uh, you, you'll see it, I'm, you know, once I get everything all done. I think it's gonna look good because it's the whole bed. So I could fit like standees and, you know, like the cardboard standees of characters and um, more big, piece box sets uh, back there and it'll really look like kind of like a showroom um, yeah it sounds great you know how yeah. to do it so mm. now let, let me ask you um i know you said you got some reviews planned uh do you want to give us a little hint as to what these reviews are like what what the games you've been playing that you're gonna uh review and this is going to be on and on what channel is it going to be on 
Yeah, so first of all, I filmed the Pixels review, the Mission Impossible review, and the Deadpool trailer uh, trailers review. And that is basically what, what is it, uh, uh, what is coming. Uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to be able to finish them all. On the gaming channel, I'm going to release a gameplay video of um, Rocket League. So that is on the gaming channel and on my movie channel, I'm ready to release the Mission Impossible review because it's done rendering right now. Ah, okay. Well, the Mission Impossible review. But that, that's a game? No, no, I mean the movie, the, oh, the movie, movie, Mission oh, Impossible. Oh, okay, well, the Mission Impossible movie, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm on the, the movie side right now because I, like I said, I just filmed the Pixels review, you know, the movie Pixels with Adam Sandler. And yeah. Of course, Mission Impossible that I saw today, and then it's my video about the Deadpool trailer. I just couldn't uh, do anything. Uh, what was it? Um, like yesterday when the trailer came out, I was I was super busy, but uh, at least I filmed those videos. Um, so now I'm able to edit them and release them as soon as possible, which is probably going to be tomorrow. Gotcha, gotcha. And anything for the video game side of things on your Gary Gary G gaming. Yeah, as I said, uh, our Rocket League. Uh, oh, Rocket League. Video. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, my mind is uh, kind of slipping. <laughs> um, I can't my coffee though, too. Yeah, and that game is awesome, by the way. It's great, just great yeah, game, tell, lots of fun. Tell me about that game. I've, I've, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I've never heard of it, <laughs> but uh, maybe you can tell me about it. Like, what is it? Well, it's super popular at the moment. Okay. I actually find out uh, find out uh, found out about it from Angry Joe because he did huh. a review of the game and he said, "Oh, this game is like everywhere. Uh, the servers are overloaded with gamers that want to play it because it's an online game with cars that uh, and you play football with cars." Wow! Uh, and oh, with with a huge ball, <laughs> and uh, it's just, it's just yeah. so much fun. You never believe that a game like that would be that fun because you're really playing football with other players from all, all around the world you can put your flag from your country on your car they Ooh. also have our flag which is awesome and uh, you try to um hit the ball of course as much as possible and to score a goal uh in of course uh, the opposite team's uh door Just so yeah football. but but when you say in cars you're driving in the cars playing football yeah, you're playing as a car. You don't see the driver, the person. You you just ah. see the the car. Oh, okay. Kind of like Disney's cars. Yeah, they're very cute cars, uh, but you can customize them, uh, oh. paint them, wh whatever you like to to change their pretty much yeah a lot of the things to put uh, li little hats on them, which is very funny. <laughs> And of course, um, uh, you you play as two teams. I mean, you can be either from the blue team or from the orange team. So one time you are from the blue team and the other time you are from the orange team. And you can also play with only two people. I mean, one against one, two against two, or basically most matches are three against three or four against four. And it's total mayhem, and uh, sometimes you you can climb on top of the uh, the stadium because it's like in a bubble. You're in a bubble. You have to check out my latest oh, gameplay videos because I already released the gameplay video um, for the game. So you can check that out. Okay, I will check that out. I like that. And and of course, this is for PC, not on a console, right? Oh no, it's actually for a console, but I think it's only for PS4 right now, and the game was free uh, till oh. now, or it's still yeah. free on the PS4, I'm not sure. But no word on a, on an Xbox One, right? Because I have Xbox One only, and Xbox mm -hmm. 360. I haven't heard the game to be on Xbox, but you can check it out, I guess. Wow, and what, what is the name of the game again? Because i got to write this down, I'm going to forget it. It's, yeah, like Rocket League. Oh, Rocket League. Okay, Rocket League, yes. Rocket L E E. L O C K. Let me check it out. Oh, okay. Just to be sure. Uh, yes. Uh, R O C K E T and League. L L E. Okay. 
Oh, locket, Lee, not rocket. Okay. No, no, it's rocket. It's rocket. R O C K E T. Rocket. Oh, okay. Okay, I gotcha. And then Lee spelled L E. Okay. I will look into that. It's with um, a blue logo. Blue logo. Okay. Yeah, this this does look like it's something that may kind of be kind of fun. I mean, I remember there was a game called Twisted Metal. Um, you know, where it's just a bunch of cars, and uh, I, I only played like a little bit of the first one, and you just kind of fight. It's like, you know, you you fight in like some arena or in a, uh, I don't know, to give you like a land, you know, like a battleground where you can fight. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I played that before. Ah, yes. okay. Okay, that sounds cool. I definitely um, know that game. But uh, it's not like this game because you're basically playing soccer with a car. Right, but you're playing for it. Oh, yeah. soccer. It was football. Yeah. yeah, for me it's football because here football is soccer only. Oh, oh I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's because yeah. I said football because uh, it's called football here. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, oh, that is cool. Um, yeah, we don't have, uh, we have rugby, but it just played between some of the universities. I mean, in some universities, it's a discipline, but as an um, official sport, we only uh, acknowledge soccer as football. That That is what I mean. Okay, I gotcha. Oh. Okay. Now let me ask you, here in Bulgaria, how's the weather out there right now? Is it like cold, hot? It's super hot. It's summer. It's super hot there. It's summer. Okay, so you got it there. That's something I've been meaning. I wanted to ask Sir Wolfbane yesterday if it was hot or cold there, but I just didn't get the chance. And my brother kind of remind, <laughs> reminded me to ask, you know, because, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite hot here at the moment right now. Um, yeah, we, we are in Europe, so we have the basic climate. Uh, we have ah, all okay. seasons. We are in Europe after all, so yeah, it's hot. Yeah. Oh, man, okay. Um, oh, I'm just trying to think here what else uh, we can touch up on. Uh, well, see. I can tell you if you like, of course, uh, because, that sure. is, because you asked me about the climate and I just... Um, all of this uh, about the Zinawara Princess music that is Bulgarian music. I mean, the main title and some other songs. Uh, if you oh, know okay. this. Yeah, okay. if you heard of that, I don't know if you know that. Uh, actually, no, I, I, I did not. Well, uh, basically, uh, you know how Zina started in Hercules and uh, our music yeah. was first used in Hercules and then mm -hmm. uh, they used one of our most famous, um, you can say, folklore groups to sing the okay. soundtrack of Zina. Uh, so, yeah, the main title that the show starts with, it's our music and there are, I think, four or five more Bulgarian songs that uh, used in some dramatic moment of Xena or just as a background music. Really? I, yeah, I, and as a matter of fact, I do remember you bringing s something about that up a little bit in one of your Xena uh, uh, videos where you talked about, yeah, it's like your the Bulgarian theme song or something or the theme song of Xena. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, like the beginning part of it where, um, where like the bagpipes that, that yeah, yeah. starts off. Absolutely, wow. yes, absolutely. Oh, this I, is the I love main that. Title. Yeah, and I can also translate to you uh, um, the, the lyrics from that. Oh, sure, yeah, I would love to hear that. Okay. I have to wow, just sure. first find them because I have, I, I have them somewhere, but who knows where. Hmm. So I'm searching right now if you want to. If I find him fast, I shall see if I can find oh. also one of my favorite Zena songs too. Okay, I found I found it. I have to uh, if you if you like, uh, I can tell you first how is it in Bulgarian. I mean, what they are singing in Bulgarian, then I can translate it to you. Sure. Okay. Please. Yeah. Oh, okay. So 
uh, if you remember the song, uh, it starts like this. Jenata uh, Yazdi Samotna, but this is um, in a dialect. So in the song, if you hear if you hear it again, it's going to be hardly noticeable what they are saying. I mean, it's hardly noticeable even to me yeah. Yeah, because the words are so like in one another. Uh, then it's um Nena Tomina Srazia which means that is the first part so this means the woman is riding alone then her past has defeated her uh, against uh, the warriors of a dark world uh, she's fighting for good and that's the first part and then the sex yeah no yeah keep going but i'm saying that so describes her like what you just said right there you know from the dark world and yeah absolutely so they really put much effort to write this in bulgarian so it could make sense and then um rogovi zvonove idvat napravete pat na vojna tapani biet va fritam princesta pak tuka this means um like um you can say a, a huge uh, a ring uh, is is very hard to translate because it's it's an old Bulgarian dialect, you know, and it's and to transfer this in English is kind of hard. Um, it's like mm, uh, it's like a ding. So big music, you can say, uh, in a ding, then make uh, make way to the warrior. Uh, drums beat in rhythm. The princess is once again here. That is the second part. I hope that you get the idea about the first, uh, the first line. Yeah. And okay. and, and then uh, the third part. Janata uh, samotna. The woman is riding alone. Um, Oh no no no! That is the last part. I, I'm just reading the English translation. Actually, I just okay. I didn't notice that it was in English, and I just translated. I was, I was about to say she doesn't write alone. Eventually, she meets up with Gabriel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 that was funny. It's only two. It's two parts. Yes, and that's pretty much it. And there are some other songs that once again it's about the warrior and basically and. Mm -hmm. There's um, actually a pretty funny moment in one of the episodes in season five where um, uh, Athena, the goddess Athena, Athena, wants to have yeah comes to Amphipolis and wants to get Zena's child because she thinks that uh, the the child of Zena will bring the end of the gods. If you remember that, absolutely yes. Yeah, and then um, that is in a tavern. That scene is is in the tavern, and uh, the mother of Zena starts to sing. Uh, this song in Bulgarian and it's it's very funny because the lyrics doesn't make any sense to the situation and of course only I know that <laughs> yeah because she sings uh, the song is Gledai me Gledai uh, which means watch me watch me and so she sings uh, watch me watch me um, just continue watching me <laughs> and then what what was the other part um yes uh today i'm here uh and tomorrow i'm gone and that's the only thing that they sing in repeat and it just make it make it makes no sense that's to the scene oh geez yeah. i think i know the song and it, it is a lovely song that you know the mother sings and uh, um i think i think it might be different was there any uh, music playing doing when she was saying that or no yes but, it was a music pain but first Irene, the mother of zina started like um uh, alone singing alone and then they just started to add, add the music up i think because there's a song and i don't know if it's the right one it's it's a one where you know when zina kind of returns home to and and uh, i forgot which is from anthropolis or in and the uh, anthropolis. anthropolis okay uh, that people is anthropolis and Tripolis, yeah, where she thinks she can come home, you know, kind of you know, co go back home and everything will be cool. And when she gets there, you see the people working on the fields and you hear yes, that music. It, it, oh, yes. Yeah. yes. 
Atlanta. Yes, yes, yes. This is exact same That's song, song, actually. That is a beautiful song. I absolutely love that song. I have the soundtrack somewhere. And I just play that on repeat sometimes. And just like, you know, the, the vocals, the, the, the high pitch of the of the female. That, it's very bad, but it's, I can't explain it. It's, it's beautiful. Absolutely. I, I love I love that song. Almost like something, you know, there, there was a, um, I think I, I was listening to, a, uh, I think it was, God, I can't remember. It might have been like, not Braveheart, but it might have been like Gladiator or something. I was watching that, and one of the music on there kind of reminds me of that Xena, that song that I was just trying to sing, <laughs> uh, and I did very badly on it. But, um, yeah, it kind of reminded me of that, you know, with, with the female vocals. I, I wish I can find it. I, uh, what is the name of that song? Um, they make me play? Gledai ma gledai. Gledai Well, it's very hard to write this. Um, I mean, to understand how to write it in Latin, but it's basically G L A E N. Oh no, no N. Um, G uh, L E D A E uh, I. I mean. Ah, you know what? I think I found it. Um, it's it has I to be in YouTube, yes. One, I see. Oh, it and, here. oh, and you know what? Yeah. I I have to say this because I'm going to forget it otherwise. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, please. Yeah. When I saw this movie now, the Melissa McCarthy movie Spy. You 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 know that movie? I think yeah. The last time we were talking about that, and that had um, which is Christina Applegate in it. No, no, no. Spy with Melissa McCarthy and Oops. yeah, uh, the, the latest uh, comedy that is a spy comedy. Okay, I'm going to be quite honest with you. Um, I don't think I ever saw the trailers for it. It's it, it's a pretty successful movie. I mean, you have to see it uh, either on theaters because I think it's still on, or it's not. Maybe, but. Uh, anyway, it's this super new cool movie with Miss McCarthy. Okay. Uh, it's similar to Austin Powers. Mm, okay. And, I know Austin. Yeah, and um, I'm saying this because uh, the movie starts in one of our sea cities that is called Varna, and they show this incredible mansion, uh, this house. It's, it's so luxurious and awesome and they say that this is is in Varna and the whole setting everything it looks like something from Paris uh, I mean something from a totally different sea city but it's definitely not from ours and it was super funny when it said Bulgaria Varna uh, below on the screen and then um, a very famous actor but I'm not sure who that was it, it was a um, very elderly gentleman spoke in Bulgaria and he was so funny because he he tried to speak uh, the lines but um, since he I'm sure that he didn't know what he was saying he didn't know how to actually um, say the words correctly and and it was super super funny and that's just from this <laughs> super new movie and he played Bulgarian uh, gangster or something and his daughter uh, was the main villain in the movie? She was Bulgarian. Imagine that. Uh, yeah, I, I I gotta go check that out. I'm, especially, oh man, uh, as you said, it was shot in Bulgaria too, right? At least that that sequence of it. No, no, no. I I think that they just made this house up. Totally house made this up. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, a lot of movies are shot really shot here, like three hundred. I mean, the second three hundred movie. Uh, yeah. you know, 300, like Rambo, some of the effects for, for Harry Potter actually w were made here and other, other movies, but this particular scene with this amazing mansion, uh, there is nothing like it in Varna, I think. So that was pretty ridiculous for wow. me. I mean, for people that are from here. <laughs> yeah. 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 Especially like if someone speaks the language and then they're trying to, you know, they have like a character, you know, kind of say something that's supposed to be in that language. Uh, um, and maybe, they, you know, they think, well, you know what, I, I think the majority of the audience isn't going to really know what it is. So we're going to say it, even though it doesn't really make 
a lot of sense, but we're going to make them say it anyways. But then those people that do speak the language, like such as, you know, in your case, uh, you'll understand it, you'll be able to translate it. And I can see how that can be kind of, you know, kind of hilarious. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's very hilarious. And, and there, there was one thing, though, if you ever seen Kickboxer, and, um, and, and this was actually translated correctly, um, you probably don't know the film Kickbox. It was Jean Claude Van Damme, where he fights a guy named Tong Po, and his brother gets paralyzed and the whole thing. And then, um, so Van Damme wants to try to learn Muay Thai, which is Thai kickboxing. So he goes to some school that teaches Muay Thai and tells him, "Yeah, I want to learn Muay Thai. I want to fight that guy." And he points at a poster, and it's Tong Po. And then the guy speaks Thai in Thai, and he says something. I said, like, "Oh, you know, one you know, whatever." And uh, I had one of my dad's friends were over at the time. And uh, I said, hey, can you translate this, what, what he said? And then he tells me, oh, he's, yeah, he laughed. And he said, he said, this guy here, Van Dam, he wants to learn more Thai so he can go fight him. It's just like Maze well, he can just go out there and kill himself. I said, oh, wow, because, you know, when he tried to fight Tung Po, you know, it's kind of like impossible to defeat him, you know. And so I said, oh, so, and he said it correctly? And it's absolutely, yeah, he said it. He, he, so that's one of those rare instances, I guess, where he did say it, um, and it wasn't just like gibberish, like it wasn't just... You know, like made up kind of words, or you know, something didn't make any sense. So, you know, that was kind of cool. Yeah, I've watched that movie actually. You saw Kickboxer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw the I saw that movie like when I was very, 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 very little. But uh, I do remember, I re I remember that scene actually. Um, but no, I mean, this guy he didn't talk gibberish, uh, but uh, the way that he spoke the words, it was like he. Is talking like a robot, you know. Yeah. He know how to pronounce the word so it could be adequate to what he was saying. That that is what I mean. Right, right. I gotcha. Just like with the Zena thing, with Zena's mother saying uh, the words that didn't didn't make sense. Unless, let's see. She said, well, she didn't she didn't, cho she didn't choose that song. I mean, the creators just choose that song because it sounds yeah. like a, a heroic song. And yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, when you have to compare, I mean, if I have to compare the other songs, the other songs make sense because they're about the warrior. I mean, the first song, yeah. the main title is about Zina and the other songs are just from our folklore that uh, the one song actually that is called the warrior princess song um the song is about a warrior and a warrior not from those ancient times but from a lot more recent times actually which was also kind of kind of funny but at least it was about a warrior i love that yeah and when you were translating even though i think you said that you translated it kind of or you're reading like the english part of it but Still, I, I can, you know, what you read, even though it was, you know, um, the English translation already, it, it absolutely does pertain to the character of Xena. You know, it embodies everything about being like a dark uh, hero or a character, you know, who um, just came out of darkness and decided to kind of change her ways to become a hero, um, starting off traveling alone. But of course, you know, she runs into Gabrielle. And this is like the first, uh, you know, episode, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, the first episode, yeah. She meets Gabrielle, and yeah, you know, I'm just thinking about this right now, and it's just bringing back just wonderful memories, like um, like the end where, you know, Gabrielle just, she keeps, like, being persistent and kind of, I guess, bugging Zena that she wants to come along with her and, you know, hey, you know, I've got to learn these things and, um, you know, we can, you know, be partners. And uh, she says something about, uh, and maybe we could be friends or something, and then Zena says, um, okay, whatever you say, friend, right? And it ends, do you remember that episode? Yeah, actually, Zina was resistant the whole time and, and the end of the episode, yeah. since Gabriel kind of saved her when the villagers wanted to stone Zina and to beat yeah. her and almost kill her maybe with uh, rocks, yeah, Gabriel just mm -hmm. swooped in and, and just uh, said something to, uh, came out of that whole situation, so Zina saw that she's very resilient, and uh, at the end of the day, she decided, "Yeah, you can come along with me." That that was like at the very end of the episode. I love that. I, it's you know, it brought a tear to my eye. I mean, um, and let's see, and kind of jumping like way ahead to like the final season with the I think it's like the six yeah six seasons. It's, it seems like it lasted longer, but it, I guess it's only six seasons. 
and yeah. um, just I, I wish they did not kill Zena off you know, in the first place. But I know she's technically still like a ghost. But just, just that whole scene where Gabrielle is holding the ashes, and she says, "You know, your life ad adventure has brought you to the farthest reaches uh, of the sea, uh, and you know, and all four corners of the earth." And then she scatters the ashes, and then you hear the ghost, "And to the place that I'll always remain." Uh, she says something like, uh, your heart. And then she turns around and then she says, uh, so um, where, where are we off to? Well, I think we should go to, you know, this place. I hear that they're in need of a girl with a chakram. And then she kind of looked, you know, because that was Zena's words at the beginning, you know, in part one. And she goes, where you go, um, I, I shall follow or something like that. And I'm getting goosebumps over there. I, I'm so sorry. You know, where you go, I shall follow. And then she yeah. goes, I had a feeling. Oh, God, it's just. Uh, it just brings a tear to my eye and just uh, why, why did they kill her off oh yeah i, I kind of cries cry my cried my eyes out when i saw this for the yeah. first time yeah it's it heartbreaking to kill off your favorite female character that she already made made up for everything that she did and she didn't have to die i mean i know why she she died and had to stay dead because she captured those souls she made so that they are trapped in the spirit realm that um the spirit of yoshi i think was his name was able to to draw power from those souls and zina had to stay dead so those souls could be forever free but it, it still it wasn't a good enough excuse because zina was already uh did She's, she was already done so many great and good things that whatever she did before, it was, yeah, already she made up for everything. Exactly. Absolutely. She did not have to stay. No, she was, yeah, like you said, she was giving that explanation, but I, I really think those souls still would have been, it, it, in a way, to me, it didn't make much sense. I guess they were just trying to, I don't know what they're, they're trying to find a way to just make it like, in, you know, like like an emotional response to the to, to the audience to to make her die and come up with this this kind of half-assed explanation as to why she's got to remain dead, um, and it, it worked though. You know, it it, it worked in, in the sense that it made me you know, kind of brought a tear to my eye. I got to report, uh, it kind of made me cry. And, but um, yeah. God, I mean, if we didn't see the way I wish it would have made the, the final episode. Like, for, first of all, the, the final episode of Hercules, they didn't kill him off. It was that whole epic thing with, you know, Ares bringing back the, the Titans. And see, he yeah. came off. He, he lived. You didn't have to kill off Xena. I think it was a mistake to bring her to China. That could have been like a second to the last episode or a third to the last episode to go back to Chinka. But then when you go for a finale episode, that's cool. Make it a two-parter. But bring it back, what the fans are used to, back to Greece. Bring back Ares. Bring back Autolycus. Uh, Simonius and the characters that we know and love and you know have even if it's like for brief moments um, you know uh, I, I really think they should have done that bring bring um, uh, uh, what's her name uh, uh, and oh god the, the, the goddess of love I can't her name is escaping me now um, Aphrodite. Aphrodite, <laughs> Aphrodite you know bring her in on this too because I guess she's one of the only few gods remaining do something where Oh, I don't know. The the gods aren't really dead, and they have to try to rescue them. They're really in prison somewhere, and then they free them, and then you bring the gods back. I know she's kind of like um, not really for the gods and stuff like that, and neither is Hercules. But you know, they kind of maybe appeal to you know to Xena and they want her help, and and that would be the thing. They're being held in some kind of a hell dungeon, and Xena and Gabrielle have to go try to free them uh, with the help of Autolycus, free them, free Zeus and Hera and all the the gods, and then bring them back. But then the gods at the end say, like, you know, we kind of change our ways a little bit. We'll still exist, maybe help out a little bit, but we don't want to force the people to worship us if they do not want to worship us. And they have, like, the freedom to worship whatever gods they want. And those that do, you know, we'll bless them. But we won't kind of, you know, back in the old days, you know, in Greece, the way they made it, like Hercules and Xena, the gods, they kind of pressure the mortals to, to kind of worship them. You, you know what I mean? How, how they do that? They, they kind of... Um, well, here's the thing. So the gods, for me at least, have to stay dead because they deserved that fate. 
and oh. so and it would be cooler if they stay dead because Zena this uh, did this amazing thing that she killed all the gods uh, when no one no one else was able to and uh, the ending should be only about Zena because it's Zena and if you bring and if you bring the gods back everything is going to be super crowded and the potential for more and more stories will be created because they are back yeah. so this is only going to complicate everything for me um, if you have to send off Zena maybe they should think of something like um, yeah, how the ending was in Hercules but bigger maybe Zena uh, is to become something more like uh, the warrior princess that is the first of uh, her kind and um, maybe she will lead the way for a new type of warriors that will help the world something like that i mean it's super hard to think about uh finishing xena because she is like endless character everything about her could be could go on for forever and they also had that those episodes that are in the future and that work uh, worked out pretty well yes. so the possibilities are are so much and it is it's no good way to send off xena if you think about it here's my scenario another one too where i think uh, that episode where you mentioned how they were sent off into the future i think it was uh were they clones? They made clones, and they literally the future. Remember that fight scene with uh, I think it was with Ares in the construction site, you know, in in the modern times, meant to be like in the ninety, oh, what year? Or like the year two thousand? It's meant to take place, you know, the construction yeah. site where they're fighting. Um, and Xena discovered her sword was rubber. Remember they woke up in the cloning, uh, in a cloning facility. They were cloned, Xena and Gabrielle, and then. Um, at the end of it, they were like, you thought that they died. She, I think she killed she killed uh, Ares by dropping the, the big metal uh, the magnet thing, that the magnet to pick up the cars. And no, um, no, 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 episode. no, uh, Ares wasn't in that episode. Sending the clones is the name of the episode. Sending and the, the episode was about Alti because Alti wanted oh. to bring yeah. back Zina and Gabrielle to, um, I don't know, actually, for I'm what. Sorry purpose but she wanted to do something with them so she could fix history and her her own fate it, it was something about that and in the end of the episode Zina managed to defeat it and i think kill alti and, and gabriel and she uh, went on um uh, they got into a car drinking champagne and that is how the episode ended yeah so they're still alive now here's what they should have done absolutely yeah continue the series instead of killing her off um make it where it now takes place in modern times what do you think of that no no it's not the same if you don't have the ancient time setting with the swords and everything because what is it going to do with uh with a gun she she already tried it and she was like yeah, holding she, the gun and she uh um the gun just uh, went off and she was like <laughs> yeah, this is that, not this, this is just useless yeah <laughs> yeah she was completely with gabrielle so she was forging her own her, uh, yeah i remember that oh okay that was super funny yeah, yeah. well yeah. Uh, we have to uh, finish yeah. this sure yeah absolutely why don't we um uh why don't we uh any final closing thoughts that you have to say you know about xena video gaming and future things about your channel i'll, I'll let you have the stage here at this point well, I actually wanted to bring bring out wrestling, but I don't have we don't have much time for that. Uh, uh, do you watch WWE? I'm gonna be quite honest with you. Uh, I don't really watch wrestling. Mm, not ever. <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to watch, not but not like faithfully, and like how people are always, um, you know, they get like kind of hardcore into the wrestling. Uh, not so much me with that, but um, like you know, like Hulk Hogan, you know Hulk yeah. Hogan. Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, it's you know the old school days, you know, junkyard dog and all that. I would kind of watch like some of that, a little bit of you know when the rock was kind of big, you know, back in the nineties. But I don't follow like the storylines. So my my good buddy Brian, who moved to Phoenix, Arizona, he hardcore, you know, following the storylines and of everything. Um, Vince McMahon and all that, and um, who's that guy? Million Dollar Million Dollar Man or Ted DiBiase? Yeah, that's it. He's a guy oh. that he 
Yeah, you know Ted DiBiase, he kind of like has like yeah. a lot of money and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, his father is actually the money man or something like that. But uh, Ted DiBiase is not in WWE for years now. He's gone. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that 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 gives you an idea of my uh, how recent I am. I take it you're still. <laughs> you're, this this is <laughs> this is unbelievable. You're into wrestling. <laughs> you're into wrestling. Yeah, absolutely. That, I'm a huge that fan. Amazing. That that yeah. is incredible. T tell me about that. How, oh man, are you currently watching it or like old footage? No, no, I, I watched it since I was like 14. Ah, basically. Oh, okay. So um, I, I'm a super huge fan of John Cena, as you know, he's the best for me. But I wanted oh, to tell you a very interesting thing that actually one of our guys, a Bulgarian named Rusev, uh, managed to uh, came into the WWE and to be super big i mean he's one of the main wrestler, uh, wrestlers right now alexander rusev, rusev. is his name, ah, okay. his name. okay yeah, he was pretending yeah. to be russian i mean bulgarian that turned russian and then uh, he's okay. once again bulgarian right now <laughs> so it's super funny and the other funny thing is that he yells at uh, in bulgarian the whole time I mean, he speaks english but um, whenever he wants he yells at the other superstars uh, when during matches he, he would yell in bulgarian and super super funny and there is um, an i quit match with john cena and he was supposed to say i quit if john cena beats him well, or the other uh, way around, but of course John Cena never gives up. So uh, John Cena was starting to defeating uh, to defeat. Um, you know what I mean? He 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 defeated Rusev, and Rusev instead of uh, saying "I quit," he was uh, yelling in Bulgarian with an accent in Bulgarian, and it was so super uh -huh. funny. That, it, that you can't even imagine and they stopped the match because because he has uh, a woman companion uh, Lana that is Russian and, and, and she basically said he said he quits he quits <laughs> it was, yeah and he yells in, in Bulgarian but with an accent because he's not from the capital uh, we hear no. that are from the capital that is Sofia uh, talk more you can say without an accent. We have some accent, but it's the clearer version of Bulgarian. And he's like from a different uh, city that talk with a particular accent. And so when he yells and he speaks, it's, it's super funny because he didn't lose his accent. He he can because the only languages that he knows are English and Bulgarian. He knows only that version. And it is pretty funny. I mean, if you're Bulgarian, you're really laughing every time that he speaks basically because he you know that he knows english but he particularly wants to speak bulgarian so he could be like uh, pretend that he's the big deal or something but no, that, that of, is all, all part of the script also. right and, and and i think it's just kind of like a, a more of an insult i guess when you speak it in your language because you're thinking you know, they don't understand it and you can kind of say whatever you want to them you know what i mean and insult them in many ways and um they just they won't get it so it's kind of like a like a double insult i guess <laughs> yes cool. yeah well, well i'm i'm kind of feeling embarrassed when he's speaking bulgarian uh, when he he can just speak in english because he apparently can speak english uh, enough well so i'm like why the hell you don't speak english people don't understand what you're saying speak english god but I, I kind of like that. I like I like that angle where he's speaking Bulgarian and then he's got his Lana, the, the lady friend, um, translating for him. That's very cool. Kind of gives like, you know, part, part of the show. Um, but but yeah, no, I, I, maybe he should like mix it up and then and do some bits, you know, in English. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I like that. Yeah, uh, well, well, he, well, he had um, uh, when uh, this match ended and after that, he was saying that he didn't say that he quit. I never said that. Uh, and they uh, translated it once again. And other people in, in, in the internet also translated that he said that he quits. And of course, the uh, the script was uh, he to deny the whole thing. But it was super clear to, to me and to the whole country here that he, he quits, basically. Uh. But but did he quit? Oh, no, he didn't really quit that way. 
he did quit but in our language and because it was in our <laughs> language uh, he uh, made this as an excuse that he didn't really quit he didn't really quit i gotcha oh geez okay <laughs> it's oh, super man. funny let, let me ask you this though uh were you ever a fan of the rock absolutely i'm okay super huge fan of the rock he's my second favorite uh, wrestler and actor after john cena oh wow oh john cena let me see i, I know he started in one movie wasn't it called like the marines or something um those are like several movies actually so it's the marine 12 rounds a drama movie that i forgot the name but it, it was like a drama and then and then yeah i forgot but he he now starts in uh that movie that um i told you about previously train wreck with amy schumer the comedy uh, yeah. and uh, he starts uh with the movie sisters in the movie sisters uh with um that actress uh i have to check her name she she's very i mean this is a, an, a, an upcoming comedy i'm sorry ah Tina Fey, Tina Fey, yes. So she, she's going to be in more what movies. What? And like mainstream movies. Oops. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> it just, it just paused for a moment. Yeah, okay. I, I've noticed. Okay, so if you okay. like, we can discuss one more thing and then we have to really close it. Sure. Uh, I can't really think of uh, anything else other than, um, oh God, uh, let's see. I will say that I am looking forward to those reviews. I'm looking forward to uh, when Fallout 4 does come out to see some gameplay footage by you. I mean, uh, when you do get it or if you do decide to get it, are you going to get it for your, your Xbox console or are you going to get it for the PC? Well, for now, I don't have an Xbox. I only have a PS3. Oh, you only so, have a PS3. Okay. Yeah, a PS3. I, I've said that a million times. I, I'm going to get uh, the PS4, but for now, I'm only on the PC, and uh, I'm pretty much going to sell PS3 because I, I can't do anything with it now. I gotcha. Well, I do hope you get Fallout 4 because I want to see a review of Fallout 4, hear your thoughts, and honestly, see some gameplay footage. And see, you know, your character creation, and uh, so yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I watched those videos. Uh, it's not like I haven't, but uh, it's one thing to watch a gameplay footage; it's another to play it. So I'm looking forward to that, so I can really have an opinion and Absolutely. really see the game. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to seeing you do that, and seeing your character and everything. It should be very, very fun to watch, or maybe create a John Cena and <laughs> in the game. <laughs> yeah. John Cena is. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to, yeah. It, that's a kind of an idea to create like a, a Xena in a post apocalyptic world. <laughs> um, hmm. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. She, she has many skills, as she puts it. <laughs> I should make a t shirt with that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I have many skills. I have many skills. Oh, God, absolutely. That, that's fantastic. Because, you know, I got to say, I've seen some uh, of your videos where you were kind of sh uh, showcasing your sword, swordsmanship, with the sword that you have, the Xena sword. By the way, is that real? Is that a like a real uh, metal? Or is Yeah, that, that is um, stainless steel. Stainless steel. Uh, wow. Yeah, but in the world of swords, I mean, the, in, in the world of people that really knows swords, this is not a real sword. It's like a sword's um how how did they call this a sword like object so it's basically it's not battle ready you can you can't fight anyone with it it's dull the blade okay. is dull uh, but it's a real stainless steel it's something that you can use to to hang on the wall to display but it's not it can't really do anything basically right. well, and that's a good thing but as long as it's like a metal thing that's why it looks so good and has the weight for it your sword skills is very impressive. I mean, I don't know if you actually practice it or, or what, but I, I'm very super impressed by your skills with the blade. So it was incredible. Oh. So, yeah, so absolutely, you have the shirt, you know, I have many skills, of course, get a chakram, of course, and then, you know, get your, your sword, right? And then the, the, the sheath, okay? And you can just go around and I, you know what, I think, you know, you get the haircut of Xena, 
So heck, you can just go around and and um, cosplay as Xena, which I'm pretty sure you've done in the past before, eh? Well, the only thing that I'm missing is the chakram because it's too expensive to get. It's like three hundred dollars or oh. two hundred and fifty is too much for me. Uh, but uh, I I I didn't learn, so I haven't uh, go somewhere to learn how to swing the sword. This is all. Oh, um, um, you can say that I'm a self-taught person. That's good. For, yeah, uh, for about everything. So uh, if I do make a shirt that says I have many skills, it's going to be for real because I do have many skills, actually, yeah. just like That's Zina. Fantastic. Okay, similar to Zina, but I can do lots and lots of things and, and, and learn them all by myself, basically. And just learn the pressure point thing. I know you got to put your finger oh. right here. That's very, very dangerous. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's a good thing to know, yeah. Yeah, if you've ever seen Kiss of the Dragon starring Jet Li. Have you ever seen that one? Kiss of the Dragon starring Jet Li. Mm, uh, nope. He uses, and Bridget Fonda's in it, he uses, uh, he has around his wrist some needles put in the pressure points. And you can do certain things to stop the pain, put someone to sleep. Well, I'll just say there is a scene, I won't say exactly where, he puts it in the back of the neck of someone, which is called the Kiss of the Dragon. And then he can't move. What did you do to me? I put a needle in the back of your neck. That's it? I said, but in a very, very special spot. It's very forbidden. It's called the kiss of the dragon. And what's going to happen is all the blood in your body is going to rush to your head, but it does not come down. And pretty soon, all the blood is going to come out of your ears, your mouth, even your eyes. And you will die very painfully. And then, That's and then, nasty. That is nasty. And he took the needle out, yeah. And then and then he takes the girl and then the daughter of Bridget Fonda's character. And then she says, Goodbye, mister. And then you go off. And next thing you see, he starts convulsing and his muscles start lacking up. And all the blood, as she said, came out of his ears, his nose, his mouth, and he died quite painfully. So that's like similar to Xena. That is was that what she said? Yeah. That's kind of like something that could happen if Xena did not relieve the pressure. So that's the technique that she's using. Yeah, well, her thing is like, I call up the flow of blood to your brain and you'll be dead in 30 seconds. So basically, it's the opposite. She cuts <laughs> off the blood right. to your brain, so you don't have anything here. Oops, Oops. yeah, you're right. Oh, I made a mistake. Yeah, 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 so the opposite, but the similar kind of effect that it will kill you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to die pretty painfully. And there were uh, uh, there was that episode from season you i think with atolicus the king of thieves and they were supposed to uh, to steal um this amazing object that is the most powerful weapon on earth and it turns out that is the um, uh, i forgot how 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 this uh, was called uh, but the point is that uh, there were uh, the, the villain in the in the episode was Centaurus, and he is very good with pressure points. He only fights with pressure points, and Atolicus was supposed to be Centaurus. And in the end of the episode, Zina uh, ha had to fight with Centaurus, and they only um, did this fight with their fingers. And it was pretty was cool awesome. because when he striked Zina, he was like uh, paralyzed. And he had to fix. He had to fix it himself, and on the leg. And Zina also, she fixed everything that he did to yeah. her uh, herself, and then uh, he just made this awesome move in the heart, and he was like done. That was an awesome episode. And this was the second season because, like I said, I have all the Zenas, uh, you know, on DVD, and I gotta watch them again. It's been years since I've seen them all, and I, I want to do a, a marathon from season one to season six, from beginning to end, and. Um, yeah, I, I, I do remember that. <laughs> I do remember that episode. That was quite cool. Uh, one of the, the best uh, uh, episodes I have seen, along with the, the whole storyline with Dayhawk. You know, the, yeah. the first episode when Gabrielle did her first kill, and it goes uh, uh, something something for Dayhawk, and she goes, "Who's Dayhawk?" You know, Zena's like, "Who's Dayhawk?" And then they fight, and then um, you know, I'm not impressed. All I see is just a, a lame attempt at some lousy religion that's failing or something like that, and that demon got mad and. And it ran into the wall, and I think it blew up or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but 
yeah, you know, <laughs> because she's because Zena has never heard of Dayhawk. You know, she's heard of Zeus and you know Ares and all those gods. So who's uh, this Dayhawk? <laughs> absolutely, all... yeah, yeah. You remember this episode very well, and this is the one uh, the one time that Ares was actually right, and he wanted to prevent all that. And if you, if Zena was um, if Zena listened to him. That all that the whole thing uh, could be avoided, but she didn't know that Dayhawk will be that dangerous. I mean, every time Aris is is lying to her. So based on think, what, like she said, uh, to believe him. Yeah. And, and and I like the story. And I, yeah, and I like the story that Ares used when Zena helped get uh, Ares's godhood back. Remember that? And then then he's, he's still he's still trying to do bad to Zena. So Zena said why you know why, why are you still doing this you know she's looking around like calling for him you know, on the field and here says let me tell you a story Zena a story of this snake and this I think a hawk and the snake is asking this hawk you know I have to get across the no, river no 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 it's the swan and the scorpion oh, and the scorpion has the swan uh can I uh, can you carry me uh, through the through the river and the swan said of course and then the scorpion have the way the scorpions think the swan and uh, the swan said I was helping you why why did you sting me and the scorpion said that's what I do and Ares wanted to say to Zina that that that's what he does but he does it's in his nature you can't change it I love yeah, that and my good buddy yeah related a story about that as well with this yeah, but yeah that was season so, six season six where when um the amazons wanted to kill zina's daughter because she was lydia yeah that was uh, by the way lydia was a cool character as well i really dug her and Callisto. i i was really hoping Callisto would have really turned good i know she became good as an angel but i was hoping she'd actually turn good when she was still you know when she still had her long hair and but that would have yeah. changed yeah, but you know, Callisto is Livia. That is uh, uh, Callisto's soul, and that is when um, the relationship between uh, Zena and Callisto became uh, like first full full circle because um, in giving her that new life, uh, that new baby to Zena, and in the same time Zena is giving her the new life. Uh, everything was pretty amazing, like uh, mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful uh, thing thing to the creators to came up with i think because no other show did anything like this before i think absolutely oh yeah I, yeah you know i i have the the complete season of xena you know all you know how, how do you watch it again if you don't have the you just watch it on on youtube or something or on the internet no um uh, a friend of mine uh brought me all the seasons basically oh so you have them okay on yeah, dvd right them. Uh, yeah, oh, on that DVDs. Is... Yeah. That's the okay. one thing that I do have. Well, I think that uh, it's uh, like almost midnight where I am, and I really have a lot of more things to yeah, do. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, we just kind of rambled on a bit, and I guess we'll just end it by you just telling us, the audience, what is your favorite season of Xena? That's a very tough question. Very, very tough question because I love all the seasons, but maybe it's season six on the top of my head. Okay. Yeah, the last one. I'll go with the one with, uh, you know what? I'm going to go with the one with, um, I want to pick that one. Is I don't know if it's season six, but uh, you know what? I, you know, I'll, I'll go with season six too as well. Even though she she dies, that's the one with Mephistopheles and all that. I really like that, and where Gabrielle was possessed by the demon, I think by Mephistopheles himself. Remember, it was like an exorcist type thing when Zena was possessed. That's a horror. That's the only horror episode. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. The town. So season six for me as well. Okay. That. Okay. All right, guys. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys uh, for checking this out and thank you for, uh, uh, you know, thank, I want to give a very special thank you and shout out to my good buddy, Gary G, uh, for, you know, doing this hangout and um, hopefully we'll, we'll do more in the future and talk about other games too. I know I keep bringing up Fallout 4, but maybe there's other games that you would like to talk about that you can, 
you know, I'll, I'll look into that one that you told me about the the, the Rocket Lee, and you yeah. know, we can talk more about it and talk about some of your reviews. I got to go catch up on your reviews, but I also got to catch up on Parsnip Burgers. Uh, and my good buddy Matt, two of his videos. I got to check if Todd has any other videos up as well. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll check out that you know that footage first with the Rocket Lee. Um, if yeah, you guys, yeah. if yeah, if you guys do not know who um, Gary G Reviews is. Um, you know, I implore you guys, please head on over to her channel. Uh, she hails from Bulgaria. As you guys just saw, she speaks Bulgarian. Um, you speak Russian too, right? Uh, nope, because Russians have nothing to do with us. Oh. <laughs> you just speak Bulgarian? Oh, God. Uh, are you, uh, you only speak uh, Bulgarian then? Uh, I only speak Bulgarian and English, you can say that. Yeah, she speaks, <laughs> I'm sorry, she, <laughs> she speaks Bulgarian and English. <laughs> um, and just please, you know, she has two channels, okay, Gary G Reviews, Gary G Gaming, so one, of course, if you can't guess it already, is a gaming channel where she puts footage, reviews video games, and in Gary G Reviews is stuff, mostly like theatrical film releases or things that maybe have just come down uh, to DVD and Blu-rays, you know, and she does, I think, just really in-depth, high-quality reviews on both sides, whether it's games or movies, very underrated reviewer, uh, very un. Under, uh, LPR, she does like mini LPs type of things, um, and just just a very sweet, kind uh, person. So, I mean, why wouldn't you stop? Head on over to both her channels, show her much love and support. I implore you, show her much love and support. Hit that subscribe button. It only takes like a couple seconds to do so. Check out her stuff, comment, thumbs up, share the video, spread the word, spread the love. Um, and I am Felagar, and uh, I'll turn it over to, to Gary to say your goodbyes. Um yeah thank you very much for that awesome 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 it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and uh, well what what i can say uh, i'm just kind of speechless at the moment because oh. yeah you said so many good things about me that i kind of lost for words right now Not but basically true. yeah uh, People could uh, check your channel as well, of course. Uh, if we have some new viewers here, they could, they could, of course, subscribe to your channel because you have an awesome content. So, guys, uh, basically, till next time. Uh, we, we have to do this more often because uh, apparently we have many things to talk about, many things to discuss. Uh, we, we, we love movies. We, we both love movies, right? Uh, and... Yes. Yeah, in game, so uh, we haven't, we just haven't finished yet. We have a lot of things to discuss, so it's awesome. And I have, I had a great time. So thank you very much for having me. Thank you. It was an honor. Okay, Absolutely so uh, thank you guys for watching and farewell. And I do have to apologize. You know, I think when I cut you off the last time when you were on, it was kind of premature. I meant to hit the stop broadcasting. So I'll just hit the stop broadcasting. Um, but then I just won't hit the X to, you know, to, to cut you off because you were in the process of saying goodbye. And then I think I, I prematurely hit the X button. I didn't mean to do that. So I'm sorry about that. So I'm going to hit the stop broadcasting right now at this point. No problem. <laughs>